not only his presence with you, but everything that comes with being his presence, being with you, everything that comes with being God comes with his presence also. It means when his presence showed up, healing shows up. When his presence shows up, uh, a deliverance shows up. When his presence shows up, protection shows up. Zechariah chapter 2. I lifted up mine eyes and again looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. Then said I, whether, whether God goest thou, and he said unto me to measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof, what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked to me went forth, and another angel went out to meet him. Somebody say another angel. And said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls, for a multitude of men and cattle therein. For I, said the Lord, will be unto her a wall of fire round about, and will be the glory in the midst of her. Ho, ho, come forth, and flee from the land of the north, said the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, said the Lord. Deliver thyself, O Zion that dwelleth with the daughters of Babylon. For thus said the Lord of hosts, after the glory he had sent me unto the nations, which spoiled you, for he that touches you, touches the apple of, my, of his eye. For behold, I will shake my hand upon them, and they shall be a spoil to their servants. And you shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me. Sing and rejoice, O daughters of Zion, for lo, I come, and I will dwell in the midst of thee, saith the Lord. And many nations shall be joined unto the Lord in that day, and shall be my people, and I will dwell in the midst of thee. And they shall know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto thee, and the Lord shall inherit Judah his portion in the Holy Land, and I shall, and I shall choose Jerusalem again. Be silent, O all flesh, before the Lord, for he is raised up, out of his holy habitation. Father God, thank you, Father God, for this word. I pray, Father God, that it would be spoken clearly, Father God. Speak through me, dear Lord. Father God, fill me up. I need your anointing right now, and I need you in, in a major way, dear Lord. I need thee, dear Lord. Like that song, the, the songwriter sung, I need thee, oh, I need thee. So, Father God, thank you, Father God, for what you're doing. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Israel. Well, we're about to talk about Israel, Zion, my people. And uh, for the last time I was up here, I'm going to just kind of touch on a few things before I get started deep in the Word. And I, as uh, prayerfully, we'll get that last sermon up. You know, I think I did it with December 5th. One day we'll get up that sermon so y'all can go back and, and uh, 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 do some, some recoup, do some... Uh, 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 filling in about what I'm about to talk about. But what I'm going to say is, Zechariah and uh, his counterpart, Haggai, was raised up in, in a time when the people of Israel needed them the most. They needed them because uh, Israel was being released from captivity uh, by, by the providence of God with the Persian king, uh, 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 released Israel from captivity of being in captivity seven years in Babylon. So he, 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 he not only released them, but he paid for their trip back to uh, Jerusalem. Ain't that the providence of God? Uh, God used the Persians to capture the Babylonians, and then they for he forced the Babylonians to release Israel. Ain't that something how God can do that? God can topple the enemy that is toppling you right now. That's the type of God we serve right now. The enemy that is messing with you, the God can raise up somebody stronger than them to topple them to release you. Ain't that something? That's how good God is. And that's the, the, the amazingness of pr the providence of God, bear. One day I'm going to speak on the providence, but I, I got I to study a little longer before I start tackling the providence and sovereignty. But we can also see how, how God's hand was for his people. You know, and, and God rightfully so put, put God, uh, uh, Israel in captivity because of judgment, because they turned away their heart from God. God put them and, uh, and, and raise up Babylon, raise up the Syrians, Mr. DeWight, to come and topple over Jerusalem. Wipe them. They say they, say they ain't had nothing. They say it looked like a, a plain uh, 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 field uh, uh, of this floor like that. The Babylon came in and destroyed Israel. They ain't had nothing left. So he put them in captivity. 
So on, on their way back, God raised up two prophets. Haggai was the one to uh, uh, be a little rough with him, get started, uh, uh, preparing stuff to build. And then God raised up Zechariah, who was a little soft, a little gentle, a little uh, uh, per God used uh, uh, to encourage them to keep uh, 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 with the building, to, to uh, uh, keep on doing what God has sent them back to do, and that's to rebuild the temple. Yo, and so, you know, sometimes when we're doing the work of the God, we could have them haters come in. We could have that enemy come in and, and discourage what we're doing and, and try to handle uh, uh, us bad because we're doing the work of God. But the last thing the enemy wants to do is for the people of God to raise up in this day and age. And so don't be surprised. You see, I had trouble. Chris, I had trouble this time, man. The enemy, Lord, God, the enemy give me trouble this time, you know. And I ain't going to lie, you know, it, I, I should be used to it, but you never get used to the, how the enemy try to handle you. You know, so my, uh, 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 my uh, notes to, to the enemy right now, you know, you can do what you want. <laughs> you can do what you want. I'm going to still be up here <laughs> preaching and teaching the word. But as I, as I read these scriptures, I can see that. You know, what is coming from this pulpit, Miss Lynn? What is coming from our bishop about the modern-day Hebrews, about the, the so-called African-Americans being the, the modern-day Jews, the modern-day Hebrews of this, this which they are? Amen. I could read in the Scripture and say, this is the truth, man. The Scripture point to that doctrine being the truth doctrine, being a real doctrine, being a true doctrine about us right now. As I read this, I can see, boy, that's us, Miss Linda. That's us. So Zechariah was raised up. And as I said last time, I, 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 I had a few points. Uh, my first point was the people. And when I talked about the people, I talked about uh, Zechariah as a prophet, but not only as a prophet, uh, the importance of having a prophet, the importance of needing prophet, the importance of uh, uh, our pastor being a prophet himself, and the importance of Knowing a real prophet, the importance of knowing how a prophet speaks, then knowing his personality, knowing his characteristics, knowing that we are in need of prophet these days because prophets uh, hear from God, because prophets are true. Prophets do really speak from God. Prophets do come and, and, and give, thus said the Lord. These days we have modern day prophets. So we spoke about prophets, A. And then we spoke about uh, B. Which was that? Oh, angels. We talked about angels. We talked about how angels are in control by God. They don't do their own thing. They ain't just run. The last time some angels went rogue, the, the, uh, he left with Satan, left with Lucifer. So we know that these angels are not on their own accord. They are being controlled by uh, uh, God. They are meant to uh, do the work of God. They are meant to minister to the people, and they are, minister, they are meant to... Uh, 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 Encourage the people, you know. So we talked about angels. And we're going to move on to uh, point C, uh, sub point C, y'all, uh, another angel. When I looked at this scripture real good, and I, I looked at uh, verse 2. Let's go back and look at verse 2, and we can see about this other angel. Then say, uh, whether go, goest thou, let's start from the number one, because it... it, it we want, want to get the whole context of what he's saying. I lifted up mine eyes and again and looked, and behold, a man with a measuring line in his hand. He's talking about the angel, y'all. Then said I, whether thou goest thou, he said unto me, to measure Jerusalem, to see what is the breadth thereof, what is the length thereof. And behold, the angel that talked with me, that's that angel minister saying, went forth, and another angel went out to meet him and said unto him, Run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for a multitude of men and cattle there. Thank you for putting that AC. It was hot up here. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> but that other angel came into the picture, Miss Mary, and told this other angel what to do. So we could first of all know that the angel that came secondly had more authority than the first angel. He was bigger than the angel. He was the one that was really calling the shots. He was the run, and, and, and what we can look at this angel was, he was of some importance. And as I studied this, 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 this about this angel, you know, I, 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 we're going to get a little seminary. We're going to get in a, a, little, a little study. We're going to get a little college right now, a little college seminary right now. And, and first of all, I just want to talk about a, a, a theophany. And, what, and I didn't give you the definition, but I'm going to just say it. 
A theophany is a manifestation of God in the Bible that is tan tangible put up for the, uh, to the human senses. We can see uh, uh, those examples as in Gen uh, Genesis 3, 9 to uh, 17, uh, Genesis 4, I didn't, I didn't say this, but y'all take, take some notes. Genesis 4, 9 to 15, kind, uh, when God talked to Cain. Genesis 6, when God talked to Noah. And uh, Abraham and Sarah, and in Genesis, 7, uh, Genesis uh, 18, and also we can see in Job 38 through 42, where he was consulting, telling God, uh, telling uh, uh, Job and telling those other people, you know, where were you when the, the skies was uh, 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 formed and, and this and that. And these are called theophanies, uh, a manifestation of God that can be seen uh, or felt or, or heard, you know. But more important than the theophany, theophany is a Christophany. And, and, and what a Christophany, Christophany, I hope I'm setting it, saying it right, Christophany is a, a pre-incarnate visitation of Jesus Christ. And if we look at that word pre-incarnated, we mean pre, before, and incarnate, which means before he was incar incarnated into a, a, a bodily form. And that's talking about coming, Jesus Christ coming into the, uh, the flesh and, and being 100% man and 100% God. And all that uh, Christophany is a pre-incarnated visitation. And we have these visitations all over the Bible. We have them all over the Bible, my people. Sometimes it's called the angel of the Lord. And when you see that, you can know that this is a Christophany. In Daniel, Daniel chapter 3, verses 25, when he says, it seems like, uh, 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 he says, the fourth man of the five, which seems like the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. We can see that this is a Christophany, a, a pre incarnate visitation of Jesus Christ. I, Isaiah 6, if we read the whole chapter of Isaiah 6, we can see this visitation, this pre-incarnate pre visitation of, of, of Jesus Christ. And, I, and at your all time, Isaiah is a beautiful scripture. Take the time out to go and, 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 and read Isaiah 6, the whole chapter. Take your time. Read it slow. Read it seven times if you got to. It's, it's a very, very uh, uh, good indication and a, a good example of a, 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 a Christophany. But we can see in this, this verse in Zechariah that this is a pre-incarnate pre, pre visitation of Jesus Christ. And what is the importance of that? Because he is the author and the finisher of our fate, my people. <laughs> he, if, if we look at this, he, he, he minister Sam, he went back in time to, to, to show us the future. <laughs> Not only about himself and what he do, but about what is, what is going to happen to Jerusalem, what is going to happen to Israel, what is going to happen to Zion. That's the importance of because he wasn't, if, he, if he wasn't uh, 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 coming in, in, the, in, in the past to tell us about the future, we wouldn't know what we be need to know, having to, what we, what we be needing to know right now to continue in this walk. We, we wouldn't be knowing a, 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 a a, a, a rule book, a, a map, a, 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 some indications about what's going on in these times, my people, with the Hebrews. This, 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 this prophet uh, uh, is very important because it has given us a rule, man. It's given us something to, to hold on to and something to, 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 to have some tangible evidence about what needs to be happening on this flat earth right now. That's the importance of this visitation. It also is, it shows a revelation of Christ. Confirmation also of Jesus' identity. Instructions and guidance of what we need to do as a people, like I was just saying. And also it is to strengthen our faith. Because when we see uh, 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 what God did in the past and what he's going to do in the future, I don't know about y'all, it increases my faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It gives, it gives some girth, it gives some, some weight to about, about what I think and what I believe and what I, I read in the scripture, what I hear from this pulpit. It gives us some weight, some gadu, some heaviness, some truth. And you know, I need that because in, in this day and age, people are trying to get you away from the faith. People are trying to get you away from trusting in Jesus Christ. That, you you going to trust in Jesus Christ? That's all you're going to trust in? 
You're not going to trust in your own strength. You're not going to trust in your daughters. You're not going to trust in your intelligence. No. Because if I trust in those things, I, I, I can further uh, uh, see that that's vain. Not only vain, I tried it. I've tried it plenty of times, T.P. Chavis. I've tried it all the time. And guess where it brought me? None but a, a heartache, pain, and sadness. But I put my full trust in Jesus Christ. When it, when it feel good, when it feel bad, I give him praise. I give him glory. We, we could go further on, and there's one other person I want to talk about, as in the people with my first point, and that's a, a subpoint D. And that's a young man. When I looked at this, 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 this verse in, in, in point four, I mean, verse 4, chapter 2, he says, and I said unto him, run, speak to this young man. I, I, I didn't do a, a lot of studying on how old Zacharias was about this time, Minister Sam, and I didn't know how old he was when he got that vision or how old he looked when he got in that vision because sometimes when you get vision, sometimes when you're having a dream, you know, he show you as you was. He show you how you're going to be. You know, he, he, you know uh, uh, time is, is, is nothing to him, you know. Uh, uh, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. So, you know, he could have do all that. But the thing about it, I just wanted to uh, uh, point out, Kimmy, Brian, that he said young men. And in this time and an age, we need to be ministering to those young men. We need to be reaching out to the young men. As I saw this kid got killed in Karen Crow, y'all, it just touched my heart. But also, it blessed my heart because, not that, but when I come to church Sundays and Tuesdays, I'm starting to see some youngsters. I'm starting to see them 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. And as I see them, I'm looking at a picture of myself when I came into Christ. God came and gave me at about 27 which I praise God. Lord, have mercy. I praise God for coming and get me. But as I see these youngsters, man, you know, college age, you know, I, I just think about how we need to be uh, uh, Adam, how we need to be not only Adam, but how we need to give them a little more credit because they're dealing with a little bit more stuff than we used to deal with. They're dealing with social media. They're dealing with uh, the availability of so many drugs and availability to so many ways to, uh, uh, to get rid of yourself, to get rid of others. They're dealing with a lot more stuff than we dealt just, just 10 years ago, my people. <coughs> so we got to give them a little credit. We got to be a little bit more easy on them. We got to also be praying for them a little more. So as I looked at the scripture, I said, young men. But we got to listen to them. What's their needs? What, what y'all want? The, the brothers in the evangelistic, man, they go and minister to some guys, man, in them group homes, and, and they tell them that they're being blessed. Let me tell you something. Them guys are not going to remember, not forget the way the people of God came out and showed them love. Because think about it. That's probably the first time they ever heard somebody say, I love you. Or show some attention to them. Or show the right attention to them, not some bad attention, not trying to influence them to do the wrong things, Ms. Linda, but do the right things. You know, like, like men that was in your position, men that used to do the same things you do, <laughs> and now we serve in Christ and it's cool to serve Christ and it's the best decision you're going to ever make to serve Christ and read his word and come to Bible study and talk to people who've been in the faith talk to people who know about this walk so my people this day and age we got to be reaching them young men them young women <laughs> excuse me y'all so I'm putting y'all on a mission I'm giving y'all some homework <laughs> You know, when you see them youngsters, you know, I mean, handle with care because them youngsters cutting up, you know what I'm saying? They don't have nothing to lose. Use wisdom. You know what I'm saying? Give them a Bible. Give them a, one of the books from the bookstore. Give them a shirt, baby. You know what I'm saying? Invite them to worship uh, night, huh? I'm going to pay for your meal. I'm going to pay for your shirt, too. You know what I'm saying? Bargain with them. Y'all know how to negotiate. Y'all know how to do them things. Y'all used to play pity pair. Y'all used to be in the casinos. Y'all know how to negotiate. Or like I say, negotiate. Because, <laughs> hey, Negroes negotiate different than others. They have the ability to negotiate. But God give us that ability for a reason, but not for bad. You negotiate things with, 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 with God on the behalf of your people, man. God likes to make deals. Yeah. 
God like to make this. You know what I'm saying? Let me drink my water, y'all. Amen. And let's move on further to my point two, y'all. And let's go back in verse uh, chapter two, in verse four. And we want to look at the B part after he says about that young man. And, and in verse four, he says, and say to him, and say unto him, run, speak to this young man, saying, Jerusalem shall be inhabited as towns without walls for the multitude of men and cattle there. Like I was saying, Babylon, the Assyria came and wiped them off the face of the earth. They ain't had nothing left. I think they, they didn't have grass, Carl. They ain't had plants or nothing. They just had dirt, gravel road. They was wiped off the face of this flat earth. And so God, uh, using Zechariah to encourage them, using Zechariah to give them a picture, not only Zechariah a picture, but give them a picture about what he's going to do in the future. And what, one of the first things he says he's going to do in the future, he's going to make Jerusalem shall be inhabited as a town without walls. A hey, without walls. Minister Sam, I looked at that and I, I just couldn't help but think about how them being in captivity in Babylon, they had so many restrictions. They was limited in their thinking. They was limited in their reading. They was limited in the things they could do of God. They probably couldn't even read scripture while they was under captivity in Babylon. They couldn't do no thing. They couldn't pray. They couldn't talk to each other about Jesus Christ. None of that. They was limited. They was cut short. They was uh, 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 not free to do the things that they were made to do. I'm thinking about us in slavery. We was limited. We wouldn't even... Uh, 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 allowed to read. We would first, furthermore, read, read the word. <coughs> we wouldn't allow to do the things that God called us to do. We wouldn't have uh, uh, allowed to be entrepreneurs. We wouldn't allow to be uh, 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 the head and not the tail. We wouldn't allow to be leaders. We wouldn't allow to be those things. There was always suppression. There was always oppression. And, 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 and God is saying, when you come back to Jerusalem, it's going to be without those limitations. <laughs> You're going to be allowed to see, we live, we live uh, uh, even with that slave mentality right these days. We live in a poverty mindset these days. I listen to some people, and I'm, even myself, I listen to people talk, and they got that poverty mindset. They got that slave mentality. They got that limited thinking. Well, I can't do this. Well, I can't do that because I'm not this color. I'm not that color. I can't do that because I didn't finish this amount of schooling. I didn't finish that amount of schooling. God is saying when, when, when we be raised up out of captivity, we're going to have no limits, no walls. <laughs> we're not going to be constricted. We're not going to be uh, 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 thought of as less, but we're going to be alive. I ain't going to lie about it. When, when, when you let somebody loose uh, in, in a gifting that God has given them or, or some type of talent, when you let them loose or you put them in the right place, where that talent could be used and, 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 and uh, utilized properly? Let me see. You're going to see God work, my people. Without walls. Jerusalem is going to be without walls. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. <laughs> this is what we're going to be saying, and not only saying it, but really living it, Amen. really doing it. Also in Matthew uh, 19, 26, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You're going to be quoting that. You're going to be saying that a lot more these days because you're going to be without walls, my people, without limitations. You know, people can put you in limitations. The other race can put you in limitations, Brother Lee. But you know you can put your own self in limitations? Yes, sir. The devil don't even have to do nothing. You stop yourself. The devil don't have to do nothing. The devil's sitting back with a, a, a drinking some iced tea, eating some coconut, and eating a banana. Because you're doing his work. Yeah, he's saying I ain't got to do nothing. But you're putting limitations on yourself. Let me tell you something. God is with us. God's favor is back with us. So when you do something, know that God has your back. Know that God is not looking at you as somebody he's putting judgment on. God's eyes are towards you now. God, and I, I'm getting ahead of myself, but God's favor, God's presence is with y'all, with y'all more now than ever. And we got to trust that. We got to trust that. Amen, amen. 
It's not only uh, uh, something you say amen and hallelujah to you, but it is true. An actuality. I'm tired of seeing put, people put limits on themselves. I look at people, I'm talking to people sometimes, TP, and I'm, I'm saying to myself, you don't know what's in you. <laughs> I'm trying to help you do what God is showing me. To, to, to that. It, one thing I, I asked God back in the day, I said, God, let me see how you see. Let me see your people how you see your people. Let me see what you see in your people. And I'm, let me tell you something. He let me see that all the time, Chavis. I'm looking at people. I'm looking at y'all walk through these uh, 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 four years. I'm getting out these new vehicles, getting houses, getting business and stuff like that. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. Y'all ain't seen nothing yet. You just got to know within yourself there's more to you that is in you right now, that you are seeing in yourself. There are more, there is more, more, more. So don't limit, to your, limit yourself. When you see these uh, uh, important jobs, when you see this astronomical amount of money, we, when, when you see uh, people having houses, people having cars, when you see people being se- successful, you can't see yourself like that? Start to see yourself like that right now. Amen. Saying, I'm going to be like that one day. I'm going to have that. And look, it's not for selfish gain. You're going to have some stuff, but it's to build the kingdom. It's to extend the kingdom. It's to do some things. Money is a tool, so we need that tool. We need that, man. B of that, that point, point two, B. As we look at the, the, the other part of this uh, uh, verse, we can see a multitude of men without borders. I'm going to add without borders, a multitude of men. What he's saying is not only that Jerusalem is going to be filled with his people again, but let me tell you something. His, his, his people are going to come into his kingdom more. And what I'm saying is, we see in revival, we see in reformation, but we see in more and more. We see in a lot of people coming in, but you can expect more, Ms. Lou. You can expect more, Ms. Randy. You can expect more, Ms. Mr. Dwight. We're going to see more. You see, we look at the little uh, uh, stretches and, and bounds, and we wonder sometimes why Pastor's so excited what he sees, but I can imagine him reading this. I can imagine him, God, showing uh, the same thing that Zechariah, God shows Zechariah about the multitudes of men coming in, Kyle about the multitude, about the droves of people coming in, not only to the kingdom, but, but, but into church, into Bible study, into reading your word, into praying, into prophesying. <laughs> there is hope, my people. The people you've been praying for, them children you've been praying for, them aunts and uncles you've been praying for, they're going to finally come in. in. Brad, they're going to come in, man. This is what God is telling Zechariah, D.B., the ones who we got the least hope that's going to come to church is going to be in church one day. They're going to beat us to church. <laughs> They're going to be here in noonday prayer. They're going to be asking about, what, what that book say? What, what that book mean? What you talking about, that book, that Job 114? And we're going to be able to tell them, it's not Job, it's Job. But more important than Job is what Job was talking about. We're going to be able to discuss the, the different types of uh, 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 the, the minor prophets, the major prophets, the book of the Old Testament, the book of the New Testament. We're going to be able to discuss those things, my people. Our people going to come in. Multitudes of men going to come in. Oh, Jesus. But we can trust and know that it's going to come in, uh, Deacon Carl. Yes, sir. But we can prepare. <laughs> James, we can prepare, which we're already doing. So I'm giving you a picture. I'm giving you some uh, little inside information about uh, what our bishop is doing right now. Amen. You see, when Philadelphia started, Miss Mary, it was always built for expansion, Brother Lincoln. Always. It was always built for expansion. Always. And so as, as somebody that knew that, I, I live my life with that same mentality. And everything I do is for expansion. I, I, I make things so there can be other things added to it. You know what I'm saying? But we can know and we can prepare in our lives and help with this work that is going on in this church, and we can find out the evidence of why that is going on, because multitude of men is coming in, my people. And look, it may not look like it. I'm going to say it again. It may not look like it. But trust that it's going to happen. Miss Mary, it's going to happen. Be- not because I say this. Chris, because the Bible said this, Chris. God said this. <laughs> there are going to be a multitude of men. 
So whatever we got to do to help prepare for the influx of people coming in, we do that. We do that. Sub, sub point C, cattle therein. And I'm, 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 I'm going to give some further explanation of why we need to know the importance of l'argent. Pastor talking about tithes and offering. And, and, he, and, and it's so critical and it's so important that we learn, learn about this, learn how to deal with money and God. Because we're going to need some money to put and for some places and some spots for the people that's coming in. Look, look what God said. I looked at that, Miss Mary, and I was like, wow, what is he saying with this scripture? The multitude of men and cattle therein. And the first thought that came to my head, hand, my head, not my hand, my head, my head, my head, my coconut. <laughs> What's left in there? But anyway, <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I thought about the old times. And I think sometimes right now, probably the end of you, man, if you got cattle or if you have a lot of cattle, you thought of us as a wealthy person. <laughs> you see, cattle is used as a currency. Cattle is, cattle are used as a form of payment back in the days, and I think sometimes these days. So when you have cattle, like he said, Jerusalem used to have a bunch of cattle. Jerusalem was rich. Zion was rich. Zion had paper. Zion had lajon. Zion had cheddar, bacon, Luciano, chips and dip. He is saying in this scripture that it's going to once be like that again. He, 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 he prophesied to Zechariah and showed him it's going to be full of cattle. <laughs> and, this, and this is what God is prophesying to us. He's looking at us and y'all going to be full of them chips and dips and them cheddar, Luciana, money, greenbacks, blue chips, whatever you want to call it. And we got to know that it is coming. You see, pastor teaching that, you see, pastor teaching that so we can learn on our side on how to deal with money. But he's also teaching, I'm sure, on his side, he's, going, he's seeing that influx coming in. So why not teach the people on how to do right with your money? And Mr. Dwight? So <laughs> I can see some of y'all looking like, boy, I'm going to be rich. I'm going to have some gold toilets. I'm going to have some gold fingernails. No, 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 no. Because as a people, we need to know how to do right with our money. We need to have money, not let money have us. And, and look, I'm, I'm just touching the, 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 the surface of it. It's way more, uh, 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 more to it than me, and I don't have time to explain this, Melinda. But we know also Malvo, Phil, and Born No Center, they got guys, they got men and women that God is sending to us that's a little ahead of us about the money game, about financial uh, 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 literacy. God is sending us a group of new people that's going to teach us how to have money, not, not let money have us. Because guess what? There's going to be a lot of cattle therein. This is what Zechariah prophesied. So people get ready. People get ready. <laughs> get ready, 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 ready. I can't do it like Brown. I can't do that TDJ. Ready, 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 ready. But y'all get ready. Y'all get ready. Y'all get ready. And also bring me to the other scriptures, uh, 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 Carl. You know, in Psalm 50, uh, verse 10, for every beast of the forest is mine. That's what God's saying, the minister's saying. What else he said? We all record this all the time. And the cattle upon a thousand hills is mine. <laughs> so we know God talking about cattle in this scripture, and he has brought, scripture, he has brought the same scripture up about cattle in Psalms. Yes, we know that something has happened. Everybody say, moo. <laughs> more, more money. <laughs> it will be without limits. We have to have a new understanding about riches and wealth, my people. Because I, I talk to people. I, I, I chill out and I hang with people with a lot of money. You know? And one thing they tell me, even before you get to the millions, even before you get to the, <laughs> you know, when you get to the six figures, you got to change how you walk. You got to change how you do things. And it's not doing that to say you're better than others, but you got to know how to walk around with a little more chips. See, we used to walking around broke. 
We used to walking around with, with 10, 15, 20, 30 dollars. We used to that. We know how to handle that. Amen. And I'm going to say because that's all we can handle right now. But if you get yourself together, God going to trust you with more. Amen. You be real with yourself. People always, I, I, I hear this, man, I'm all, how much time I got? I'm hearing this all the time. Minister Sam, I can't wait for God to give me a million dollars. And I look at him. Even when I, I talk to myself about it, I'll be real with myself, Kimmy. I'll be like, ah, can I really handle a million dollars? Do I really know what to do with a million dollars? Can God trust me with the million dollars? Can, can, can I trust myself with the million dollars, Brother Joe? Be real with yourself. Look at your friends and family. You know they ain't had a thousand dollars in the last two days. What they bought? Baseball cards. <laughs> Can God trust you with them chips and dip, my people? Be real with yourself. Be real with you. Tonight when you pray, can, don't, don't answer yourself. Don't answer the prayer you used to be praying. <laughs> don't, don't ask God and, and then say, yes, God, I can handle it. No, no, no. Ah, right, God. You wait for God to answer that. And be, and, and, be, and, and be a big boy and a big girl when God give you that answer. If God give you that wrong answer, I got that answer you don't want, that means God wants you to get right. God wants you to learn something about having this. So my people, get ready. Get ready. Point three, a wall of fire. Oh, Lord, I got a little bit of time with my voice. I hear it. Verse five, let's go back to verse five of chapter two of Zechariah. He says... For I said the Lord. This is how we know that it was a Christ out for me too. God admitted himself for <laughs> I said the Lord. That's how we know it was a Christ out for me. Will be unto her a wall of fire round about and will be the glory in the midst of her. Uh, the midst of her. Minister Sam, I don't know if this is true, man. You might know this is true, but I've, I've often heard, you know, when you see a fire you're coming and you, you burn a circle around you, that fire will not come in that circle. Is that true? To a certain extent, huh? <laughs> well, let's suppose it's true, y'all. <laughs> That's true. You know, also, if you, you burn a line in front of you, that, that, that fire that's coming will not cross that burn. I've always heard this true. And for this point, I'm going to make it true, whether it's not true or not. But y'all go tell me if I'm not. <laughs> but anyway... If a fire can stop a fire, why not God that controls the fire use fire to stop another fire? Ain't that something? Only God can do this type of stuff. Man, only God. Now just imagine you seeing a wall of fire. I remember they, they had a fire in that, 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 that dumpster across the street. For one of them days we was doing something. You know, I seen the firemen running, but I was standing right over here looking. That's a, that's a big fire. <laughs> that's a big fire. But I'm not going near that fire. I'm not going to mess with that fire. Yo, anybody who ever been burned by a hot pan or hot coffee, you're not going to or even hot grits. <laughs> you're not going to mess with no hot stuff no more. You're going to look at that fire. You're going to look at that hot stuff a little bit more. So God is saying he's going to be like a wall of fire. You see, when they was in, 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 in Jerusalem, when they was in Babylon, the Assyrians came out and I probably had no trouble wiping Jerusalem off the, off the face. Outside of the Lord's protection, Ms. Mary, they probably didn't have no trouble wiping Jerusalem off the map. So God is saying something is going to be different this time. <laughs> You're going to have the same things, but it's going to be me with that wall of fire protecting you. You see, any good shepherd, if you've done a study about a shepherd, and he has his sheep at night, a lot, nine times out of ten, he's going to start a fire to, to, to keep predators away. To, to warn predators that, you know, there's, a, there, there, there's something, uh, start this fire and watch out for the sheep. He does it to protect his sheep. So God is doing the same thing. 
when, when the enemies of God, when the enemies of Jerusalem, when the enemies of Zion comes, they're going to be a wall of fire protecting them once again. You see, there was not a wall of fire protecting us then. You see, God had judgment on us, and he took that wall of protection away from us, Brother George. But now, God going to have that wall of protection again, that wall of fire protecting us from harm, from, from destruction, from, 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 from getting the stuff we used to get. The things that they used to get away, it's not going to be able to be done to us no more. The things that they used to get away with, the things that used to happen to us easily, you see what's happening right now, an enemy man, so he's doing everything he can to do what he can to hurt the black people, to hurt Zion. <coughs> so we got to know that that wall of fire is back, my people. And we got to trust, we got to walk around that that wall of protection is with us, Alicia. We got to walk around, we got to do things and, 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 and trust that the wall of fire is protecting us from all the things that the, and all the onslaughts that the enemy has against us, Chris. We got to know that. And we got to act and we got to walk around with that assurance that the wall of fire is going to be protecting us. And this is what uh, God is saying to Zechariah, that when Jerusalem going to come back to their place, they're going to have a wall of fire, and that wall of fire is going to be God himself protecting them from harm, destruction, and, 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 and the things that happened to them in the past. And we got to know that today. Zechariah 5 says, <laughs> oh, I already said that. In Isaiah chapter 26, let's just pick up Isaiah 26. 26, 26, 26. Is it up? Is it up? Twenty six, one through four, my people. And I'm gonna read. In that day shall the song be sung in the land of Judah. We have a strong city. Salvation will God appoint for walls and bulwarks. Open your gates that the right, righteous nation which keepeth the truth may enter in. Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusted in thee. Trust in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. That's a beautiful scripture, man. That better Isaiah is something else. And, 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 and when people see that fire, when people see that wall of protection, they're going to know to stay away. They're going to know they ain't, they ain't, they ain't going to be able to do what they used to do to us. They're going to look at us, they're going to say, oh, no, God got it with us. God got that wall of fire protecting us, and we're going to know that. Which brings me to my point four, the glory within. And I'm going to finish with that. I had a point five, but I'm going to finish with this. In verse 5, he also says, not only a wall of fire round about, Minister Sam, he also says, and there will be the glory in the midst of her. This is assurance to them that he is with them and within them. What is the glory of God? It is the, the magnificent, Carl, worth, loveliness, and grandeur of his many perfections. More often, glory communicates God's special presence. You see, when God's presence is with you, not only his presence with you, but everything that comes with being his presence, being with you, everything that comes with being God comes with his presence also. It means when his presence showed up, healing shows up. When his presence shows up, uh, a deliverance shows up. When his presence shows up, protection shows up. So we can be rest assured that he is in the midst of her. You see, when he, they was, he was in Babylon, I mean, when they was in Babylon, when we were in Babylon, when we are held in captivity, you see, God didn't show all of himself. God was protecting us. God was still looking. He had mercy. He had grace on us. But now that his, his eyes are toward, towards us fully, it's not, now that everything that comes with God is uh, for our taking, we want that 
that, that presence without now. He, he's saying, I'm, I'm, my presence is going to be with you. You see, when the worship team is singing right up here, or when, when a good word, the presence of God shows up, I don't know about y'all, but I've been in his presence. I felt the glory of God show up, and I feel his protection. I feel his peace. I feel his love. I get revelation. I get, I get answers to prayer. I get direction. This is what God's saying. My glory is going to be in the midst of her now and forever. Doing this great dispensation, doing this great awakening, God's presence is going to be going with us wherever we, wherever we uh, are located. God's presence is going to be on the job, Carl. God's presence is going to be in our family circle. God's presence is going to be when we go to the DMV, when we go uh, to, 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 to pay bills, when we go to get food, when we, we talk to others. When we meet people and they talk about Jesus, God's presence is going to be with us a little bit more and a little bit more frequently, a little bit more fuller. So we can trust that his presence is going to be, uh, 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 going to have that God do. You know, and we can know that the glory is going to be in the midst of her. As in Exodus 13, verses 21 to 22, and the Lord went before them, in a pillar of a cloud to lead them their way. And by night in the pillar of fire to give them light, to go by day and night. And he took not away the pillar of cloud by day, nor by the pillar of fire by the night from before the people. They could do what they want. They could do what they want. They, they're not going to be able to take God's presence from you. They're not going to be able to make God forget about you. They're not going to make God turn his head to, uh, against you. Now his head is turned towards you. Now his, his, his answers, his direction is given to you. Now his revelation is going to be with you now more than ever. And we got to know that it is here in full effect. We got to grab onto it. We got to take it for the, uh, 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 it's ours. It's not for others. It's for ours now. We got to know that the picking is ripe. We got to know that God's glory is with his people now. You see, on, on a job, on some sports, when somebody is left in charge, you know, <laughs> the supervisor or the assistant coaches or, 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 or the second vice president, we got to know, Big John, that, you know, the employees, the other people, sometimes they don't act too right. You know, how they say that? When dad is going to children's play. <laughs> but, but let me tell you something. When the boss show up, when the, when the head coach show up, this is what God is saying. When God show up, the people going to be acting right. When God show up, the people going to be acting uh, accordingly right now because not, God is not far fetched. God is not a far distance. God is close. I miss Luke. God is close to us now. So we can know when, when, when we show up to places, God is with us, the people are going to be. So when you go uh, uh, do business, when you go things, you got to act like God is with you. Man, you got to act that, you got to act, <coughs> excuse me, you got to act like you know God is with you. You don't come uh, 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 acting like you don't deserve these things. You don't come acting like you're less of a person because of the color of your skin. You don't come acting like you, you were back then. You come acting like what the scriptures say. You are the head and not the tail. You are a lender, not a father, a borrower. Amen. Both. <laughs> Let's read in Isaiah 60, uh, verses 1 and 2. This is a great scripture, y'all. Y'all can read the whole chapter. But when I first read this, I named, I named my business after this. I rise. Because I wanted that a testament to myself that I'm going I'm, I'm to be arising. Not only arising, but everything I touch is going to be arising. And so people, we got to know what the scriptures say. Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen unto thee. Let me read that again. Arise, oh, put that, put that back. Y'all need to hear that again. Arise, shine, for thy light is come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I don't know about y'all, but that deserve a clap. Amen. The Lord is risen upon thee. 
They have, woke, they have woken a sleeping giant. <laughs> Not only God, but God that's within y'all has awoken. You know, awakening, you know, awakening, the great awakening, that's what awakening means. Awaken, God has awakened for his people now. Not only God has awakened for his people, but God is in you, awakening the things that have been dormant, suppressed, and oppressed. What else it says? Verse 2. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and a gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. You see, in these dark times, what we're seeing right now, what was happening in this world right now, Miss Mary, we're going to be that light. When we show up in situations, it's going to be light. Darkness got to flee. Darkness got to go. In every situation, darkness got to go because the light of God has showed up in your lives. And we got to know. When we go pray in them hospitals, we got the light of God working with us. When we go talk to them youngsters, them light, that light of God is going to be with us. We got to know that, my people. Amen. That light, that light, that light. And I'm going to say this, arise, my people. Arise, arise, arise. When in his presence, you get everything that comes with God. You know, when, when I, I, I hear about these regular people marrying princes, marrying prince, you know, they get all access to the kingdom. <laughs> and we children of the king. <laughs> and so we got access to everything that comes with him and come, becomes in his kingdom. Everything that you're reading about, talk about his kingdom, we have access to that. Now more than I ever, the gates are wide open for us to access those things because we are children of the king and we belong to a kingdom. We got to know that, my people. Like I said, bro, I'm, I'm going to mention it again. You got to know that and go home with that in your pocket. Go down or put it under your pillow. This truth says that you get healed. You get healed not only for yourself, but to lay hands on others and, and pass on that healing. You get deliverance. You know, you get deliverance from uh, 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 mind problems, heart problems, uh, uh, foot problems, mental problems, Minister Sam. You, you not only get freedom from that, but you, you got uh, uh, the power to go talk to others and, 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 and speak over them things that the people have problems with. You got to arise because the presence of God is with you, and you belong to that kingdom, and you have access to everything that comes in that kingdom. You got to know that. What else? Revelation. We getting revelation from Most High right now. We getting revelation that ain't never been heard before. I ain't talking about a new revelation, but a revelation about what the scripture really say. We getting revelation. I don't know about y'all, but I'm glad what I'm getting from this house. Yes, Every time I come Tuesday and Sundays, look, I'm glad I'm hearing me, you know, like I said, I'm hearing me some million dollar service for, for sermons for free, Ms. Lou. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting the whole play lunch. Glory. Yeah, man, y'all can tell I'm a little hungry. I'm hungry, y'all. But we get direction. I don't know about y'all. I need direction. Yes, I need wisdom. I need a, a direction on, on where you want me to go, God. What you want me to do? Where you want me to be, God? We get direction. Also, <coughs> we get peace, y'all. Yes. I don't know about y'all. As I get older in my life, I seek peace a little bit more and more. Yes. We get peace in the eyes of God, in the kingdom of God. All right, all right, all right. Yeah, 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 Lord. Amen. I don't know about y'all, but sometimes we're so glad to meet famous people. <laughs> we're so glad to talk about, like, if I met this person, I'll met that person. But you don't know. You mean with the most famous person that ever lived and existed tonight. And I'm talking about Christ the King. Christ our Savior. <laughs> you could go uh, leave this place and say you met with the King, the most important person you ever going to meet, the most popular, the most famous person that uh, people have heard about and never heard about. 
And you're going to make his name famous tonight. Not only tell him about who he is and what he's done for you and what he's going to do for you, but how he changed your life. And if you ain't going to tell nobody about that, you want to start right here tonight and, and, and change your life and, and change the direction that you was going. You know, you could look at yourself tonight and say, and I ain't got to go through all the, 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 the rules. I ain't got to go through all the wrong things you've done. You know where your life ain't right with God. I ain't got to tell you that because the oracles of God are written in your heart. You know that you're not right with God. You're right with everybody else. <laughs> You're right. You're right with the police officer. You're right with the teachers. You're right with DMV. You're right with uh, 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 the lights. The lights even got more respect than, uh, 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 than you got of God. When God say stop, do you stop? When God say don't do that, do you do that? We've not only done that. I've not only done that. I've done that, you know, countless of times. But when I realized it was home in God, when I realized it was hurting God's feelings. You see, God has feelings. So when you, you're uniting right with God, he hurt his feelings. I don't know about y'all. When I hurt somebody I love, when I hurt their feelings, I hurt too. And we got to know that we got to get our life right with God. Tonight you might walk out of this place and it might be the last time you're breathing. And you want to know that you are right. You got peace with God, Mr. Dwight. You are having a relationship with Jesus Christ. And it's real simple, my people. Real simple. You just come on up. Come on up. Real simple. Hey, you got to admit that you're not right with God. Be real with yourself, my people. Be real with yourself. You've done some things that hurt God's feelings. You've stolen. You've turned, told a lie. You've used God's name in vain. You've dishonored your parents. You've done some things that's not right with God. You know that. You got to admit. Be real with yourself. Be a big girl. Be a big, a big man. Big boy. B, you got to believe that Jesus Christ died on this earth for your sins. This really did happen. What this Bible talk about, it really, really did happen. This is some true stuff. You see, if this wasn't true, I wouldn't be up here talking about these things. There was no way I would be talking about some false stuff, some stuff I don't believe, some stuff that ain't happened to myself, some stuff I'm not living. There was no way I would be up here like this talking about this. So you can believe that this stuff is real, that Jesus Christ did die on your sin and rose on the third day. <coughs> he did it just for you, my people, just for you. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. And see... You got to confess. And what we're going to do right now is called the sinner's prayer. There's nothing special about the prayer, but it's about what you say in your heart. Thank you, saints, for praying. Thank you, saints, for praying. All those that under, under, under the sound of my voice, repeat after me. Dear Lord, I'm sorry. I apologize. All those times, I hurt your feelings. All those times, I've been disobedient. All those times, I went the wrong way. Forgive me. I need thee. Dear Lord, save me. Make me new. Bring me into your kingdom. Give me revelation. Give me insight. Teach me who I am in Christ. Holy Spirit, fill me up, make me new, cover me, protect me, lead me by fire at night. Lead me as a pillar in the daytime. I need thee. 
Thank you. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Amen, 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 amen. Father God, just, uh, I just want to thank y'all for listening. I have more to talk about. It sounded like I ended it abruptly, but next time I'm up here, you know, we're going to finish in Zechariah. They got a lot more to talk about the people of God in Zechariah. I didn't make it far again, Mr. Dwight, but look, read Zechariah in your own time. Read these prophets, because they talk about what's going on in this modern day, Devin. God, read these minor prophets, because they got a major message. Keep your pastor in prayer. Keep all the leaders in prayer. Keep your people that you see in this place in prayer, people that didn't show up. Keep the musicians in prayer. Keep the worship team in prayer. The people on the video screens, the sound booth, the security, keep us all in prayer. My people, we need to be praying for each other more now than ever. So let me pray for you on your way out. Give the benediction. Lord, I'm praying that, Father God, you'd keep everybody safe tonight, that you'd get them back home safely, that, Father God, everything would be better than when they left it there, Lord. So I'm praying, Father God, that provision would show up there, Lord, that peace in their house would show up. I'm praying that healing and deliverance would be there, Father God, waiting, them, waiting at the door, Father God, for them. So, Father God, we ask that, Father God, you'd keep my people, Father God, like a wall of fire there, Lord, and also, Father God, that your glory be, will be uh, 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 within them, Father God. So, Father God, thank you for all these things. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name, amen, amen. Love y'all, love y'all. Have a good one.